Detroit, and welcome to the Who Told You Show under the leadership of Dr. Marjorie Wilson of Peace Dove International Ministries. I am Pastor Shirley Horton, and I am your host for today. I am the pastor of God's Way Deliverance Ministry, located at 17700 Northland Park Court in Southfield, Michigan. I am also the president and the founder of Nurturing Women, a women's ministry based on Titus 2, 3 through 5. I want to also invite you to come out Saturday, May the 17th at, well, we have registration at 9.30, 10 o'clock is the breakfast, and I would like for you to come out and join with us and all of the rest of the ladies and stuff and just look and see what God is doing in this day and in this hour because God is truly blessing his people and he is truly blessing women. So women, if you are available Saturday, May the 17th, come out and fellowship with us. We'll be at Fellowship Chapel, Wendell Anthony's Church, um, located on Outer Drive. So come out, fellowship with us. Tickets are only $25, and you will be blessed. Take my word for it. I also want to give a shout out this morning to uh, Parish Home Health Care under the direction. Uh, it's also a family-owned business, and it's under the direction of Diane Parrish and her daughter, Renisha. I just want to say thank you so much for your support, and thank you for being one of my sponsors. Women, I want to say to you, today is our day. Even though we know every day is Mother's Day, I just want to say to all of the mothers that are out there today, Happy Mother's Day, and may your day be a blessed one today. And before we get started, we're going to start off with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for this another day that you've made. And I want to thank you, Father, for mothers everywhere, all over this land, all over this nation. And Father, I ask today that you bless them in a special way. I thank you, Father, for complete total deliverance today. I thank you, Father, for the joy of the Lord being their strength today. I just thank you and I just praise you and I just worship you that as your word goes forth today, Father, it is going to bless your people. It is going to pierce their hearts and it's going to bring deliverance to your people today in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just thank you that you have a word in due season, especially for those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. God is so good. And I just want to say today, I just I am grateful today for Mother's Day. And I am grateful today to be able to sit here today and to say, I thank God that I am a mother. And as a matter of fact, I have I gave birth to six, but I have five living children. And I thank God today because last week, um, I'm sorry, last month, as you can remember, I talked about vision. And I'm going to give you a scripture today. And the scripture that I came from was Proverbs 29 and 18. And it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That's the King James Version. And in the Message Bible, that same scripture says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. And if you can remember from last month, I told you vision. In the Hebrew, vision is foresight, it's revelation, and it also means to dream. And we know Jacob had a dream. And in the dictionary, it means to see. And one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 27 and 13, because it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that is really my testimony. And I thank God because as moms, I think we all know sometimes it is a thankless job. Sometimes it is a, a job that we do. And I'm saying job, but it's really, this is what we do. And a lot of times we, we don't get any recognition for what we do. But it's a 24 hour around the clock and I don't care how old our children get, you never ever stop being a mom. That is one thing that you can say, once the mom, always a mom. And when we was talking about vision, that was one of my visions, that was one of my dreams. And most women, especially us women, 
we even in school, we always we map out uh, things and we have a tendency to say, well, when I get older, you know, I'm going to have X amount of children. Well, that was my dream. And I used to say, when I get older, I'm going to get married and I'm going to have two children. Two. I wanted a boy and I wanted a girl. I wanted the boy to come first because in my rationalization, the boy, I wanted him to be able to take care and protect his sister. That was my order. That was my dream. But how do you know sometimes, how many of you know, sometimes our dreams can get derailed. And I also had a dream. I also had a vision. I was going to the Air Force when I got out of uh, school. Well, as a matter of fact, I began, I put the horse before the car. Instead of going to the Air Force, right out of high school, I got pregnant. And then I got married. And my first child, my firstborn child was born with a birth defect. And because of him being born with a birth defect, he couldn't, he couldn't sit up, he couldn't talk, he could not speak. There was really nothing that he could do. The day that he was born, I can't even pronounce the word that the doctor said. It was very rare, but a part of his brain was on the outside. Now, can you imagine? I'm out, I graduated from high school at 18. 19 years old, I find myself with a baby and a husband. I'm green behind the ears. I know nothing. But all of a sudden, I have this baby in my hands. And actually, he passed when he was five years old. But at five years old, he mentally... He was no different than he was the day that he was born. Sometimes we can have a dream, but sometimes our pathways go in an opposite direction. I never planned in all of my dreams, I never planned to, it never even entered my imagination to tell you the truth, that I would have a child that was born with a birth defect, that I would have a child that from the day that he passed, my husband and I, we never heard those words that every parent loves to hear. We never heard the word mama. We never heard the word daddy. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know, didn't even know really if he even knew us because he stayed the same. If I set him down, I had to prop him up. If he ate, I had to feed him. If he went to the bathroom, I had, he, checked, he wore diapers. That was a dream that I did not count on. But sometimes, and let me tell you, back then I was not saved. I did not know the Lord. But I always believed in my heart that God heard me. I always, there was just an instinct down on the inside of me that I knew. God was real, and I knew that he was the answer. And I remember when they came into the hospital room the day that he was born, and I remember my husband, and he looked at me and he said, Cheryl, he said, something is wrong with the baby, and they're rushing him to Nashville, because I'm from Kentucky, and that's where we had the baby. So they rushed him to Nashville, to Vanderbilt Hospital. I never even had laid eyes on him. But I remember I turned my face to the wall and I said, God, I said, I don't know what he looks like. And frankly, I don't care. All I know is he is mine and I am going to love him regardless. And he lived. And at five years old, when he passed, I'm going to tell you about the grace. And let me tell you about the mercies of God today. Even when he passed, God let it be on my terms. At the time, I had just had my oldest son now. And he cried 24 hours around the clock. I'm not saved. I'm about to go crazy because I'm sitting in the house every day with these two children by myself. My husband worked afternoons. I couldn't go anywhere. And I was about to lose it. But God in his mercy, and in his grace. At the time, I remember one night, I was sitting by my bed, and I had 
uh, him in my uh, arms. And he was crying, which he did. 24.7. It was almost as if the minute I got pregnant with my son, it's like he sensed something was different. And unless I had him in my arm, he cried. And one day, I'm going to be honest with you, I, he was crying, my oldest uh, son was crying, and I was crying right along with him because I was about to lose it myself. And I remember this particular night, I sat on my bed. And I looked up to, I just said it in my heart. I said, but God, I have gone as far as I can go. I can't take anymore. I didn't say it out of my mouth. I said it within myself. And you know, it was as if the minute I said that in my heart, it's almost as if God was waiting. That all I had to do was say the word. And he began to die. I didn't even know it. I was not even aware of it. But he, all of a sudden, he just stopped eating. You, he, he wouldn't eat. He wouldn't do anything. And I remember this particular day, I came home. I had gone to get my hair fixed, which was a rare thing, with two babies and a husband. And I had gone to get my hair done. And when I left, he was laying on the sofa. And when I came home, my husband was looking at uh, a game on TV, and he had put him in his be bed. And I went to go to the bathroom, but I stopped. And I went into the bedroom where he was, and I looked down, and I stood over his crib. And in my heart, I'm just saying, mm, he looked so peaceful, so quiet, not knowing he had passed. And normally, He's sleeping, he's resting. I would not have touched him, but for some reason, this particular day, I reached and I picked him up and I went into the living room where my husband was. And I looked at him and I said, we called him Bug, that was his nickname. And I said, Reuben, I said, look at Bug. I said, he is sleeping so peacefully till I can't even feel him breathing up against me. And when I said those words, my husband looked up from the game. He said, what? And I repeated what I said. And he grabbed him from me, and he said, Shirley, Bug is gone. Then I'm angry with him. Our anger just rose up. And I said, what is wrong with you? Why would you say such a thing? You know he is fine, but he wasn't. He had just slept away. And I know you probably say about the goodness of God, but God let it be on my terms. When he lived, when I was in that hospital room, and I prayed and I said, God, let him live because he's mine. But when I had come to the end of it, and in my heart, I just said, Lord, I can't take anymore. God took him. But he let it be on my terms. And when I say, I would have fainted if, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have fainted. I understand what it is to lose something that you love. And when I look at that situation, if nothing else, I always say, out of all of my children, he taught me unconditional love. He taught me what it was to love, even you don't have to be perfect. And that is the way our Heavenly Father is about us. We don't have to be perfect. He loves us in spite of us. He loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us with a love we cannot comprehend, we cannot even understand. That was not a part of my dream, but it was a part of my journey. And I thank God for that experience today. Because I had to be, this baby's, I had to be his arms, his legs, his feet, his everything. And in all of that, I learned something. And you know, later on, after I had gotten saved, because I had always wondered, I said, Lord, did he even know that Reuben was his dad? Did he even know that I was his mom? Because I had no recollection of exactly what he could comprehend and what he couldn't comprehend. Because we never heard those words, mother, father. 
And one day, I remember when my uh, oldest son was a few months old, and we left him uh, out here at this hospital where they take care of your children. And we went down south to take my, uh, my oldest son so that his grandparents could see him. And we left him. For three days, we were gone. And when I came back and we picked him up, one of the nurses, she looked at me and she said, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. She said, how do you take care of him? How is it that you've been taking care of him? And for a minute, I couldn't even comprehend what she's talking about. Because you know you do what you do. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, we couldn't even get his shoes on his feet. I said, you couldn't get his shoes on. So when I went in, and I, I couldn't get his shoes on either. So what? We went home. I got him all undressed and everything. I put him to bed. The next morning, when I got up, I went in. His shoes just slipped on, just like nothing. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that was his way of letting me know that, yes, he knew. He knew I smell. He knew I scent. He knew I touch. He couldn't articulate it, but he knew. Because this was the first time he had ever been separated from us. He would sleep with us. Sometimes he, he, my husband would take a nap and he would lay up on his stomach and go to sleep. And he knew something was different. He just couldn't articulate it. But he knew, uh-uh, the people that I knew, they are not around me. And God, just later on, he revealed and he let me know, yes, he knew. He knew. He might not have known mother in that sense. He might not have known father in the sense that my other children now know. And sometimes, you know, we, when one thing, bad thing seems to happen to us, it causes us to be fearful. Because how you see a thing and how you perceive a thing, depend, that's how you're going to respond. And when it came down, because I wanted to have other children, and my husband he was afraid because of this experience with Bub. He was afraid to have other children. But I wanted other children. And the first time I got pregnant, I miscarried. Sometimes the dreams that we have and sometimes the visions that we have, we miscarry. We don't take it the full term. But I kept on trying because I wanted to have children. Then finally, I got pregnant with my oldest son. I, and I prayed for the second one. I only wanted two, remember? And I prayed for the second one. But God always give you over and above what you ask or think. And I got three bonus children. And I remember with one of my children, because I didn't want any more children. And I remember with one of my children, and somebody said, oh, your prayer. I said, yeah, this is our little mistake. And the Holy Spirit checked me. And he let me know, no, I don't make any mistakes. And for me not to say that anymore, that there was a plan and there is a purpose in every child that I had. God has a plan and he has a purpose for you. And I don't know where you are today. I don't know, do you want children or you don't want children? But I sit here to tell you today, don't let fear rob you of what God wants to do in your life. You're going to have failures. You're going to miss it sometimes. But hey, God's got you. God has got you. I could have given up. I could have said, okay, the first child was born with a birth defect. Something is wrong. We're not going to try anymore. Because what if something is wrong with the second child or the second or, or the third child? And sometimes that is the way we do with the dreams and the visions that God gives us. We are so afraid of failure until we give up. But believe, listen, let me tell you something. You're going to miss it. 
You are going to miss it sometimes. I remember I was listening to Paula White and she was talking about Colonel Sanders and she was talking about all of the times that he failed and how that when he just finally decided he had this little, he had retired and he had this little pension and he was trying to find out what to do with it and he thought about uh, uh, the, the fried chicken and stuff but all, but I, before this he had failed in what he attempted to do I don't know how many times. But this particular time, they say women were going uh, to the workplace. And you know, our generation, we cook from scratch. We cook home-cooked meals. Our husbands and our families were used to sitting down to home-cooked meals. McDonald's was a treat for my children. And so he decided, okay, women are going back to the workplace. So I'm going to fry up some chicken and some mashed potatoes and some corn and on the car. And he started that out and he succeeded after all of the many times that he had failed. But this time he succeeded. What if he had decided? I failed all these other times. Why should I get up? Why should I try again? But this time was the right time. Because there is a time with everything under the sun. This was his season. This was the right time that he decided, I'm not going to let fear rob me. As I was telling you even last week about nurturing women, that was a vision. But there was a time. And when my friend came to me this particular time, and she said, when are you going to obey God? This time, there was a click in my spirit, man. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that the timing was right. You're going to miss it. You're going to fail. But don't allow fear. Don't allow the enemy. Don't allow anybody or anything to stop you from your dream. All the enemy's going to come. Jacob had a dream. The enemy came within his own family to kill the dream, to kill the vision, but not so. Yet, God took every adversity, everything that he went through, God took it and he worked it for his good. If God has placed something down on the inside of you, I admonish you today, this Mother's Day, rise up and pursue the dream. Pursue the vision that God has placed down on the inside of you. Where there is no vision, the people perish. The people die. And maybe you are dying today because you've given up on your dream. You've given up on your vision. But God is a God of restoration. And all he's doing today is waiting for you to say yes to the dream. Yes to the vision. Take that dream. Take that vision off of the shelf and dust it off and say, yes, Lord. I hear you and I will obey you. Ask God for a second chance. Lord, I'll do it this time. Believe you me, when I tell you people are waiting on you. People are waiting on you. Pursue that that God has given unto you. Know that God loves you. He wouldn't have given it to you if you couldn't do it. Whatever God has given unto you, he has prepared you. He has equipped you with everything that you need for the vision, for the dream that he has placed down on the inside of you. Believe you me. Even when you say yes, oh, it's going to be tested. It's going to be tested. But don't run away from the dream that is down on the inside of you. Don't run away from the vision that God has placed down on the inside of you. Today, I am asking you and I am admonishing you to surrender. To surrender to that dream. To surrender to that vision. 
Know that God loves you and know that you are not out here all by yourself. But God is with you. He has not. I say it practically every show. God has not set you up for failure, but God has set you up to succeed. And he wants you to succeed more than even you want to succeed because he loves you. Again, I just want to say to you today, happy Mother's Day. I don't know, maybe your children, they are not with you today. Or maybe your children, they might have even forgotten about you. They might have forgotten. But one thing I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, God has not forgotten about you. And he will come, he comes to fulfill all of those empty places that are in your heart. And he's waiting for you. All you have to do is cry out and say, Jesus. And he will come and he will answer you and he will be there for you. I am Pastor Shirley Wharton. And if you need to get in touch with me for anything, you can reach me at 313-838-4877. My email address is shirleywarden at att.net. Have a good day, and God bless you. Amen. What's going on y'all, it's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Choirboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. I'm calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now, starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that include production and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at through to $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment today. You never ever let me down and when I'm sinking and sin, you never ever let me drown. You're my life, girl, my security. You took my insecurities to put me in the lion's den and took out all the fear of me and gave me a limit to undeniable faith. In your arms, I'm safe and for that I give you praise. My soul says thank you My soul says thank you What's going on y'all, it's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Quarboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. I'm calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now, starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that includes production and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313 3